hello everyone so now this is a question for Dijkstra's algorithm it's the second time I've recorded this video because I just made a mistake but that doesn't matter because you guys didn't see that so the first one we always stick in as one zero and zero I always stick in the working value of zero just because that's what it's got in the previous few mark schemes now everything coming off the one that we've just made permanent the only one coming off that is B so it's going to have a working value of 5, but as that's the only one with a working value now, that's going to be the second one, and we make it 5. So now we've made B permanent, we need to do everything coming off B. So 5 plus 17 is 22, 5 plus 13 is 18. But if you spot any mistakes in these videos, please let me know, then I'll redo them. It's the benefit of just doing the one question per video. Um, so the smallest one that we've now got is 18. So we're going to make A the third one, make that permanent. Now we're going to do everything coming off E. So 18 plus 21 is 39. Um, 18 plus 31 is going to be 49. 18 plus the 7 going around to K is going to be 25. That's everything coming off E. So now we have a look at the working values. And C is the next smallest. So that's going to be the fourth one at 22. Then we do everything coming off C. So 17 has already been done. That's already been made permanent. So 22 plus 15 is going to be 37. And that's everything coming off C. So now we have a look at the remaining working values. And K is the next smallest. So that's going to be the fifth one. So we're going to make that 25. So 25 plus 17 is going to be 42. 25 plus 23 is going to be 48. 25 plus 15 is going to be 40. And that's everything coming off K. So now we have a look at the working values, and we've got D, we've got G, we've got J, we've got K, and we've got H, all with working values. D is going to be the shortest one, so that's going to be the sixth one. We made that permanent to make 37. So 37 plus 13 is going to be 50 for F. And 37 plus 10 is going to be 47 for G. And that's everything coming off D, because we've already done E. E's already been made permanent, so we don't need to worry about that one. Okay, so we have a look at the temporary ones, and 40 is the next smallest, so coming off, J so that's going to be 7, and we're going to make that permanent to make it 40. Now 40 plus 14 is going to be 54, which is bigger than 47, so we don't need to write down 54. Often in the marks, you have 54 in brackets, saying that you could have considered it, but you don't need to have that one written down. So 40 plus 9 makes 49. And that's everything coming off J. So now we have a look around, and 42 is the next smallest. So that's going to be the eighth one. So we made that permanent of 42. Then we add the 4 to make that one 46. That's everything coming off H. Now we've got the only two temp sorry, the only two working values we've got left are 46 and 49. So G is going to be the next smallest, which is going to be 9. We make that 46. Plus a 2 makes a 48 coming here, so that's going to be 10, and that's going to be 48. So the length of the shortest path is going to be this value here, so that's going to be 48. And then we have a look at the path itself. So 48 take away 2 is 46. So 46 take away 14 isn't 40. 48 take away 23 isn't 25. But 46 take away 4 is 42. So it's gone from F to G back to H, and 42 take away 17 is 25, so then that was to K, 25 take away 7 is 18, so that's to E, and then 18 take away 21 isn't 37, so 18 take away 13 is 5, so that's back to B, and then back to A, so A, B, E, K, H, G, F. Okay, so that was question A. So question B, find a root of minimal length that goes from A to F via J and state its length. So we know that the shortest way to get to J is going to be 40. So if I get rid of all the other paths that we wrote in. Right, so... Sorry, let's, um, so we've got to go to F. So what's the quickest way to get to F? 
So f is 40. So 40 take away 15 is k. And then we already know the short sparta here. So that's back to e. And then to b to a. So now we've got to find the shortest way to get from j to f, which we can see is either this way or this way. Now that goes directly to f, so it's going to be... Oh, sorry. I meant j there. And then from j to f. And if we add on 9 onto it, it's going to be 49. So 49 was the shortest um, way to get from a to f via j. Okay, so use Prim's algorithm starting at G to find the minimum spanning tree for the network. So what we're going to do, let's get rid of this. Let me find somewhere I should be here. I'll scan it upside down. So Prim's algorithm starting from G. So the shortest thing coming from G. In fact, if we sort of and we do all the points, it sometimes makes it a little bit easier. A, B, especially to C as well. Um, C, D, E, F, G, H, J. I know you don't need to do this and it takes a little bit longer, but I think it's easier to do it so that you don't make any mistakes, just so that you don't miss any loops. Okay, so starting at G, Prim's algorithm, so G to F is the shortest thing we've got. So we write down G F. And what I'm also going to do is write down the weight of it as well, because that will help me with part D. Now the shortest one connected to either G or F, we can see is that on there. So G H is going to be the next one. And that's going to be 4. Now the shortest one connecting to either um, F, G or H, looking round, is... This one here, I reckon. So F to J. Which is 9. And the shortest way of connecting any of those to anything is G to D. Which is 10. Okay, so the shortest thing connecting any of those is... We've got 13 here, but of course we don't use 13 because that would make a loop. Uh, 14 would make a loop. So this 15 wouldn't. Either you can choose this 15 or this 15 here. Um, it doesn't matter which one you choose. So I'm going to choose J to K, which is 15. And then the next one I'm going to then choose is this one here. So that's 7. So that's K to E, which is 7. And then E to B is the next one. That's 13. And then B to A, which is 5. And then the next one, because we've only got connect to C now, so D to C is going to be the next shortest, which is going to be 15. So that's how I'd use Prim's algorithm to do that. And now we don't have any loops. So I gave up on this one. I just used this one over here. Um, and then what we've got to do, state, and length of miles the state the length in miles of the minimum spanning tree. What we do is we just add up all our values. And again, I'm not going to get cocky, just not gonna use, I'm going to use a calculator. I'm going to double check my answer. I won't bother trying to pause the video and then not pausing it. So that's 15. And I get 80. Let's just double check my answer. again so yeah checked so yeah that I believe will be how you do this question here thank you very much